The head coaching carousel has come to an end. Which teams are the winners and which teams are the losers? Hello, everybody. This is William Del Pilar, and this is Points on the Board. All right, guys, I've got three big guests here, and we're going to start with, uh, I was going to say Big Greg Kellogg, but John said that may be uh, uh, against the law. Yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. That's a trademark violation. It's really it is. Not. There you go. So so I've got, I've got Hall of Famer for the Fantasy Sports Writers Association, as well as the Fantasy Sports Trade Association, Hall of Famer Greg Kellogg. He is truly one of the icons in this industry. And Greg and I always argue because uh, we did, we just argued to disagree. But Greg's one of the nicest guys in the industry. That's why we've been happily arguing or not arguing, but debating for over 20 years. And I've got my partner here. Big John Georgiopoulos. John, for those of you not aware, started Gridiron Grumblings. He started this whole shebang 20 some odd years ago. He's one of the smartest people I know. Now, John and I also argue every day. He's a libertarian. I'm a conservative. But John is also one of the nicest guys I have ever met. And he's very fearsome. He's what? What are you, John? 6'2", 6'3". He's a big guy. You know, so big John. And as y'all know, my regular co-host, El Matador de El Salvador, Eddie Aparicio. We got to come up with a better nickname there, Eddie. But Eddie, I've known for over 20 years as well. He's been in the fantasy sports industry as well, selling his draft boards. But before we go on, since Greg is not the, the somebody we have here every week, Greg, tell us, tell us and the audience, or rather the audience, uh, take about 30 seconds, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, I'm just a guy. And uh, yes, I did go into the Fantasy Sports Writers Association Hall of Fame, but I'm still dumbfounded by that. That should have been Bob Harris before me for sure. Thankfully, Bob's in, but I retired in 2016, came back in 2021 to play, and now I do a weekly podcast on Thursday nights. And where's that at for the audience, uh, Greg? Uh, it's... It's hosted by the Sports Affiliation. On uh, basically, it's on YouTube and it's on. Uh, you can watch it live on Twitter X, which it's basically an X space, but it's video. You know, we'll never get used to calling it X. It just sounds odd. Hey, yes, did you see that tweet? It's like, it's like, how do you say a post with X? Hey, did you see that 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 X? I, I have no clue. So I just say Twitter. Anyway, guys, it is Super Bowl preview week. Before we get into that, though, we're going to have fun. There's, there's nothing uh, uh, specifically in terms of stats, details, or anything in that sense. But the hiring carousel is finally over. Uh, many names were left, left out. So I sent you all some notes there, uh, and I'll read it to the audience, just the top three for now. Are we, any of these people who weren't hired, were they kind of screwed over? Should they have been hired by a team? Bill Belichick, uh, six-time Super Bowl champ uh, as a head coach, uh, probably what, eight, nine, ten times uh, with his whole career. Pete, uh, formerly the Patriots, Pete Carroll with the Seahawks, and Mike Vrabel with the Tennessee Titans. Those three were former head coaches, very well respected. They all have Super Bowl rings, whether it's a player, assistant, or a head coach. Uh, Greg, we'll start with you. Your thoughts. Should any of those three have gotten a job? No. Bill Belichick record without Tom Brady is 82 and 98. Tom Brady was a six round pick. He had no idea what he had. He lucked into those Super Bowl championships. Plus he's 71 years old. Pete Carroll, I think retired. I didn't think he got fired and he's 72 years old. He probably could have been hired if he wanted to be. I don't think he wanted to be, but Mike Vrabel's young enough. He's 48. He could have, he could have been hired. His overall record's not terrible, but postseason, he's two and three. That's 400 postseason. In the last two years, he hasn't made the playoffs. You know what the NFL stands for, and it's not National Football League. It's not, not for, long. for long. If you don't produce, you're going to be gone. So of those three, no, none of them should have been hired. 
Uh, real quick on uh, Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll was not fired as in a traditional fire, but he was removed from his head coaching duties. He did not want to go, and he's been a crybaby every day since then, whining about it. Uh, 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 so, so uh, 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 no, it's not a mistake because because of the way he was let go. Most people didn't realize he wasn't technically fired. Uh, Big John, any thoughts on those three? Honestly, I thought Rabel would get us. Uh... A job somewhere um i thought he was he was uh the one most likely to hire but all three of them have something that is now starting to fall out of favor in the nfl which is all three of them like to think they're general managers as well and that's oh, the problem yeah. the problem is that they all wanted to have at least partial if not co- with belichick it was complete control right so belichick wants to control everything and if there's one thing we know it's that he's a lousy general manager he's like bill parcells in that sense good coach horrible general manager, horrible talent evaluator. And you can see that like lately. Um, Right. uh, Pete Carroll, to a large extent, is that same type of guy, even though they had a general manager, player, uh, you know, uh, VP of player personnel, whatever it was officially called in Seattle, but it was a power sharing agreement. And, and he always had his nose in the middle of things in Seattle. Right. Like, I think what's happening now is owners don't want to give that much. The The new trend is you don't give that much control to a head coach anymore. So those two guys, I, I really didn't expect them to get in there. What's up, Greg? Jim Harbaugh. Well, oh, I no, was no, going to say. We're, we're going to give yeah, these we're the, gonna get the ones that didn't He's get a job. about total control. And yes. one of Harbaugh's uh, requirements was he has a say. Now, they are hiring a GM, but he has a say. In right. Personnel. Right. right. And, right, and, and, I, right. And, and I think that's, you know, it's not absolute. Obviously, you're going to see some guys in order to get a big name. Right. But I don't think that was necessary for Seattle uh, or New England. Right. Uh, I'm sorry uh, for Belichick, rather, to, to be able to find a job. Belichick, I think, probably won't get hired. I think he's coached his last game unless he's willing to take like right. a defensive coordinator position somewhere. Honestly, that would tarnish his legacy. Uh, he's at the point now that I think he needs to retire and retire into the Hall of Fame. Forget the whole thing about Brady and his record without Brady. You know, forget all that. I think uh, I think he should retire and accept the fact that he's a first, you know, he's going to go into the Hall of Fame. Right. Uh, so Pete real Cap- quick, I might. Uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead, John. Sorry. No, I was going to say same thing with Pete Carroll. I think Pete Carroll probably is too old to go somewhere and, and change his stripes. So unless there's a team that's just like, please, Pete, come coach us right that's the only condition that'll happen Vrabel will get another co- head coaching job may not be this year it'll probably be next year or the year after I think he just has to decide whether he can work with the GM or maybe there's a GM out there or a future GM that will mesh well with with Vrabel because look under normal circumstances Vrabel doesn't get fired right if it wasn't for a personality conflict with the front office Vrabel stays in place. The, the players loved him. He was getting results, even though he had a disappointing season this year. They were getting results. They had just gotten what they think is their quarterback of the future. He shouldn't have been fired, but he kind of put himself in a position to be fired. So, And it had nothing to do with performance. It had to do with, I can't get along uh, with management. And yeah, so that's what I felt. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing with Vrabel is uh, he had two GMs he's worked with the last two years. I actually put most of the player personnel issues on them. The problem with why Vrabel was let go, the biggest reason was that the the owner, I forget her name, Heidi something, uh, uh, she wanted to upgrade that offense and bring it into the whiz kid modern style. And he's that old school ground of pound. So that's what the rumors were coming out of there. P.K. you're right. He is, he's 70 or 71 and Bill Belichick is 71 too. Eddie, your thoughts on any of those three not getting a job? You think any of them deserve the job? You know, I thought John hit it, the nail on the head. I think he, what he said is exactly right. I think that uh, there was too much control of those specifically Bill Belichick and Pete Carroll would warn, and GMs tend to shy away from that. They want uh, these guys just to be the coach and they have their own GM. And uh, I think that's the, you know, what, what, what John had said about, you know, Bill Belichick and Pete Carroll, you know, they should just be, you know, accepting that they're going to be more than likely, uh, definitely Bill Belichick, first ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah. Pete Carroll will probably be a Hall of Famer. I don't know if he'd be first ballot, right. but he'll be up there. But I think these guys, you know, they their, their time has passed. They had great careers. Uh, you know, they can be in consulting roles, you know, for some up and coming, you know, uh, head coaches. Maybe that's their next role uh, potentially. 
kind of what Bill Walsh did years ago uh, when he left coaching. He did the same thing. He, cons- he did consulting. I mean, these guys have the pedigree to be able to coach somebody and, and, and consult and, and bring some knowledge that uh, some some of these coaches and these new hires might need, right? So, um, right. Vrabel, I guess, Vrabel, I think, is definitely going to get another another gig for sure. And, you know, the other names here, you know, Eric Bieniemy is something that we haven't talked about, and that's a name that you always hear about, you know, who's who's definitely – a lot of people say he should be considered for a, a head coaching job. But the thing is that, you know, he went to the commanders, leaving the Chiefs to go to the commanders. And, uh, you know, the commanders is kind of a downgrade from the Chiefs. And when he was the Chiefs, he was definitely, you know, the the, the, the offense was him and Han. And, you know, and, and now I think he's a little bit lost in the shuffle just because of where he went and, and where he had been. He had the best chance to get another head coaching job. So now, he, uh, I, he'll, get a sh- he'll get a shot someday, though. But Yeah, here's the thing about it's funny you mentioned Eric Bantamy because his name wasn't brought up at all. Right. And he wasn't, and he wasn't considered to be promoted within into the, co- the commander's role, and it makes you wonder, like, is it real? Like all the rumors you heard when he was in KC that he was really difficult in in interviews, like for whatever reason he's off putting to potential uh, e- employers uh, that he just doesn't interview well. I mean, I don't yeah. think it's a matter of his coaching being subpar. Uh, so, I don't know. What do you What do you think about that? Ben Johnson was going to have that commander's job. He turned it down. Right, I was going to say, he, t- yeah, yeah. And in my opinion, his career, that's a good move because he's eventually going to get a job that's got better talent already in place. Uh, ben, actually, you mentioned Aaron Glenn in your workup. Aaron Glenn's not ready for a head coach. He's not ready to be D- D.C., to be honest. He's got to clean up a lot of things in Detroit. I think the Detroit situation is the future for the NFL where you have a GM that's very good. If you go back and you look at Brad Holmes drafts, they've been outstanding three years in a row. I mean, every player he has drafted, save one is on the roster or practice squad. Okay. And look, he got four starters last year, four starters. That's unheard of in a draft. So, but he works closely with Jack Campbell. And I think if the NFL wants to succeed, Detroit has the model. You have to have a good scouting department first. You have to have a very good GM that knows how to negotiate the contracts and everything and negotiate the trades. That's a big part of, you know, Detroit traded down. They could have had Bijan. At six, they could have drafted Bijan. They didn't want Bijan because they'd signed David Montgomery, who's basically the same running back. They wanted Jameer Gibbs from the beginning. They trade down, and they end up getting Sam Laporta because of it. I mean, that's the pick they got, the second-round pick. Plus, they got Jameer Gibbs. I, I'm sorry, you got to work together in today's NFL. I don't think one guy can do it all. I just don't. But I think that Detroit has a good model. And I know William's smirking because he knows I'm a Detroit guy, Michigan. No, no, no. I'm not smirking at that, Greg. I am smirking because listen to what Greg said. That's a new model. No, it's not. That's the model that's been around since before we were born. A strong GM. A head coach that does the the head coaching. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. (laughs) Strong GM. You know, who signs and deals with all the headaches of the front office, a head coach who focuses on being a leader and a head coach with an offensive and a defensive coordinator. That's been the formula since we were always born that the NFL has actually gone away from. And that's also why uh, with all these new WizKid coaches coming in, they're calling the plays. They don't have time to be GM. So, so, so the Pete Carroll's, the Belichick's, that's an old mentality. And it's failed more often than not. Bill Parcells was a big failure as a GM also, you know? So, so, so I, I'm just chuckling at the fact that the new method is actually just uh, 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 setting back up the old method real quick on Eric the enemy. Go ahead. The new method is working closely with the GM and the head coach. The head but they coach always has did. To get the talent he wants. No, they didn't. The GM had his yeah, role. They did. The scouting department had his role. You go back in the 60s and 70s, the GM was the GM, and the head coach didn't tell the GM who he wanted. You look at what Campbell, you look at that, go look at the war room 
during the draft of Campbell and Holmes, and you could see those guys were working together. They were on the same page. I don't think that's widespread in the NFL by any means. Now, well, not you know, today. It's all, well, actually, it is, but but not in the format you talked about. Going back to Eric Bieniemy. All right, uh, uh, doing this, getting back into the football a year. <laughs> I'm reading 20, 30 articles. Yes, John, you're correct. His reputation did precede him. He was diff- he did he wasn't difficult to get along with, but he was old school. He would yell, scream. The new athletes did not care for him in KC, some of them, and that extended over into the Washington Commanders. It culminated when Ron accidentally threw him under the bus. Well, Ron Ver- Rivera was trying to tell the reporters, yeah, he's got to learn and grow, this, that. And they thought he was throwing them under the bus. Rivera was just describing the situation, which was, hey, he's got to understand. These are players he's got to get along with. He's got to grow with. And that offense did not really – it started – it looked hot. But when you look at the final numbers, it wasn't much better than the previous season. You combine that with the new ownership – uh, 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 an offense that really didn't improve his reputation. He wasn't even really considered for many jobs. And as far as Ben Johnson, I agree. You know, that, that was a smart move on his part. But uh, 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 there's nothing's ever a given. You're the hot candidate this year. You know, you should try to capitalize on that because these coordinators, you're only as good as your team. I mean, we've all been watching football, all four of us, for over 20, 30 years. And we know that great quarterback. I mean, let's be honest. Andy Reid, how many Super Bowls did he have before he got a hold of Patrick Mahomes? And I'm not saying he's a bad head coach. I'm saying how difficult it is to win a Super Bowl. Zero Super Bowl rings, one appearance uh, uh, with the Eagles. Now he's going to be playing for his third. So my point with Ben Johnson is, Nothing's ever a given. So I applaud his willingness to go back. Uh, and I agree with Anthony, uh, not Anthony Weaver, but Aaron Glenn. Look, that, that secondary is ranked 31st, 32 for the season. There's a lot of work to be done. Uh, Eric bieniemy has got to go to a team that is in a better situation, work his way back up. Because you're right. Look, it's not like he was that important to the Chiefs. And I'm not trying to be mean, but at the end of the day, are they in the Super Bowl or not without Bieniemy? Why? Because uh, Andy Reid always called the plays. You know, I wanted to get Mike's take. I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, John's take on this, because this name is stunning to me that it will get any type of consideration. And that is Mike Kafka, the Giants offensive coordinator. John, you're the you're the Giants expert here. What the hell is his? I mean, Ejiro Evero. I like him. That guy succeeds wherever he goes. Eric Bieniemy, for whatever you say, he he's learning and up and coming. Uh, Anthony Weaver. We saw what the the, the 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 Ravens have done. Ben Johnson, Aaron Glenn. Everybody else has a, a legit reason why they're there. I had no clue why Mike Kafka was even considered for a head coaching job. John. Yeah. I- I don't either. I mean, you know, I'm a Giants fan, but I could tell you, I, I hate the way they run their offense. I hate the way, uh, I think Dable, again, it's one of those situations. Dable is the real play caller there. Uh, yep. and, and it's Dable's philosophies and everything. Um, I, their personnel decisions are horrible. So I don't know, even if, Co- see, this is the type of thing where I buy into the theories that the NFL is nothing more than an old boy system. Because there are certain people that you can't figure out why they consistently get chances to coach in the NFL, right? Like Josh McDaniels is the first, it's the first one that comes to mind, right? Like every time, so for every time I say, no, you know, owners really aren't bigoted. They just want to win. So every time I say that, there's a, there's a new Josh McDaniels hire that baffles me, right? And you're like, how did this guy get another head coaching job, right? Uh Kafka, I'm sure, is getting these opportunities or, or or his name is buzzed because, A, he's probably a likable guy. I mean, I've never met him, but he's probably a likable guy. He's good by association. People are associ- associating him with Dable as well, right? Uh, so, so he's getting some of the rub there. But why is he being considered? Listen, if we're going for hot, young, offensive-minded uh, coaches, wh- why wasn't Bobby Slowick uh, considered the, the offensive coordinator for the Texans? Rookie quarterback, no names on offense. They make hey, it further. Hey, Nico. Well, okay, but he's still a no name heading into the season, right? Right, Greg? No name Michigan. heading into the Nico. I got you. I got you. But I'm saying nobody would have put money on the Texans to be that efficient offensively, right. is what I'm trying to say. So if you're looking for a hot 
young up and comer. Like if you want to go the uh, McVeigh route, right? If you want to go the Zach Taylor route, to me, you you should have swooped up Slowick. You should have given him a shot if, if that's what you were interested in. If you were interested in a hot offensive coordinator, you don't go after Kafka. I mean, it doesn't take much. Well, he was interviewed, John. Say, oh, John. Slowick made the interview rounds, you know, so he was in the loop, you know, uh, but I get what you're saying, uh, but, you know, one year. Uh, like, did you get the impression that he was seriously considered, though? Honestly, I didn't get that impression. Like, I didn't see well, any of those I, no, buzz. No, uh, but, but I did I, I did it for Mike McDonald, neither, and he got the job. I did it for Brian Callahan, and he got the job. I did it for Raheem I, I Morris, and he know, got the job. Eddie, yeah. Eddie, I want to know why the Washington Commanders hired a D.C. as a head coach when it's clear their offense is what needs to be upgraded. You know, I, I, that's a good question because, yeah, you would think that an offensive-minded head coach or D.C., uh, 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 yeah, an offensive-minded head coach would definitely benefit that team more than a defensive because that's that was their strength, their defense. But they do have some players on that team on the offensive side that, you know, maybe they think that, you know, they already have somebody that can un un unlock that. I don't know. I don't know who that would be, but, you know, maybe it's Eric the enemy. <laughs> Eric the enemy is the guy, right? No, so, no, uh, no, no. you know, they have, they have, you know, they have, they have good skill players, good, good skill position guys, you know, and, uh, you know, the quarterback actually did decently, you know, but he has no offensive line. So maybe they just have to short that offensive line and work on that defense. You know, that you, know you know what that was? I'll be honest, both Greg and Eddie. Here's the thing. Uh, it doesn't make sense that you didn't have an offensive guy there as well to pair with the enemy because you're going to draft a young quarterback. You've got the number two pick overall. You're getting one of the top two quarterbacks that are coming out, and it's a, a year where we have at least three, maybe five going in the first round. So right. it would, it, you would have assumed, to Greg's point, that it would have been somebody who's a quarterback whisperer of sorts, somebody who could work with a young quarterback. Um, so I don't necessarily understand that. Uh, the only thing I could think of, and, and you have to be a fan of the NFC East to understand this, this was to screw over the Cowboys. It yeah, was to take it. Dan Quinn away from the Cowboys. And it's the type of thing where you say, I'm screwing the Cowboys and I'm getting somebody yeah. that had prior experience. Nobody could really argue with that. Like no one's going to call you an idiot for hiring Dan Quinn, right? Right. You right. may have gone a better, different way, but at the same time, you're also sticking it to a division rival, right? Uh, the same way the Cowboys are thinking of hiring I don't know if they did or not, uh, Wink Martindale uh, for their DC, right? Because they know it'll put the boots to the Giants already, right? So the NFC East is always about stepping on each other's toes and throats. So uh, it's one of those divisions where if you're a Giants fan, there's nothing more hated on the planet than an Eagles fan, right? Followed by a Cowboys <laughs> right. fan, followed by a Commanders fan. So it's like, it's, it's, the, it's just the way it is. So I think that that might have had a little bit to do with it. So a couple of points here. First of all, Dan Quinn's a leader. He was he was uh oh my god, I'm drawing a blank the Detroit Lions head coach. Uh ah, somebody Dan Campbell. Uh, Dan Campbell. Campbell. Yeah, yeah, that, I'm sorry. Dan Camp uh, uh Quinn was Dan Campbell before Dan Campbell. He was known as a leader of men. He didn't call the plays. He was a head coach. Uh, uh, people forget he had Kyle Shanahan there in Atlanta. They've actually hired Kip, Cliff Kingsbury as their sure. offensive coordinator. So they did have a plan in place. You know, this offense and defensive minded, that sets the tone for the team in the old school, but not necessarily anymore with all these whiz kids. And and look at uh, uh, Campbell in Detroit. I mean, he just he let his he let his coordinators do their job. Kingsboro Burry is very tight with Caleb Williams. So maybe they're going to try to work up a trade. That said. I think Sam Howell is a starter in the NFL. Eddie's yeah. right. They had no offensive line. He was the most sat quarterback. His play deteriorated at the end. That goes hand in hand with human nature. You get beat up over and over and over. Eventually, you're going to start seeing things around you that may or may not exist. So he's really going to have to regroup uh, 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 to I'm make it in the NFL. I'm going to push back on that one a little bit. I don't think Sam Howell's a starting NFL quarterback. I think he's a stop back. Uh, stop gap rather just like Daniel Jones is I think uh, when you have Terry McLaurin on your team and you don't find him 12 times a game I don't care who the coordinator is if you're the quarterback and you don't get that guy the ball 12 times a game you're not doing your job the quarterback has to know where, who to get the ball to man any quarterback you put in Minnesota is throwing to Justin Jefferson 12, 15 times a game that's all there is to it right if you're in Miami no matter who the quarterback is there you target uh, Tyreek Hill right 
if you're in Washington, you have Terry McLaurin out there. To me, he's one of the top 10 receivers, both talent-wise and production up until this year. How do you right. not get him the ball? Now, if that was I'll the tell you how. I'll tell you how. He was sacked 65 times. The guy yeah, would but, drop back and have no one to look to. Yeah, the receiver yeah. needs time to get downfield. And what were yeah, Terry McLaren's stats? What were his stats? How many times did he get downfield successful? I agree with you, John. Uh, let me rephrase what I said. I think Sam Howell can be an NFL starter from what we saw last year and the first half of this year. But what, if I had to judge him on his last half of the season, I say, who is this bum? But at that point, the guy was getting rocked. I remember writing these the, the reports. Yeah, he uh, averaging four sacks a week. You're depending on the sack total, five sacks a game. That is the five sacks a game. I mean, it was a big deal that, that Lamar Jackson got sacked four times in the championship game. You know, that that's an exception to the rule for him. Imagine being in the NFL QB getting sacked five, uh, 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 five times on average. What does I, I'm not a big, I'm not fast with numbers. What is 65 by 17 games? Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. So, John, it's not that sacks. I just. He didn't get 85 sacks back. Yeah, so, no, 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 60, I, I, I get... no. 65 divided by 17. How many is that oh, per okay. game? Okay, yeah, yeah no, I that's got you. what I asked. Yeah. yeah. Well, by it's, it's, it's four almost games. four games. It's four it's less games. than four game. Yeah. No, no, I listen, I'm not saying it's his fault they didn't perform well, but I'm saying like, listen, you know what made Ryan uh Ryan Fitzpatrick a, a good backup quarterback? The second he entered the game, he wasn't messing around with secondary and tertiary receivers. Like he may have stunk, right? But he always knew who to throw the ball to. For sure. Everywhere he stopped, right? He would always say, who's my best, most talented receiver? I'm going to chuck him the ball. I don't care if he's covered or not because that's my best chance of success. When I see guys like Curtis Samuel, um, Jahan Dotson, and at the end of the game, they've got more targets than McLaurin, something's wrong there. Something is wrong there. It's either Howell or it's the offensive coordinator. I think, you know what, though, John, I think part of the reason, though, I think McLaurin is not a slot receiver, as the aforementioned guys you mentioned, they're both slot receivers. They can, they're more flexible. Whereas McLaurin, I think, is more of a deep threat. I don't think he's that tight window, you know, short route kind of, kind of guy. He's just, he's not that. So that's part of the reason I think why he wasn't getting the throws. I, I agree with you. He's not a slot receiver, but I'm just quickly trying to look up his, um, his uh, targets for the year. And like, believe me, I had him. What's your McLaren? Yeah. Like he had, um, I had him on my fantasy teams, like three teams, because I said, this guy is a great receiver and he's, and his ADP is low. And it just goes to show you next year. What? What was that? Next year. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and what you see all of a sudden is like, why is this guy ADP so low? And I think that was a reflection of Howell. It wasn't a reflection of McLaurin. And I think based on the way McLaurin ended the 2022 season, we were like, yeah, him and him and McLaurin, they had that chemistry for three, four games. It'll continue for a full season. Right. And it just fell flat on its face. Yeah. Believe me, it well, was like. Well, John, the, also th- the other thing is they really didn't have a rushing attack. Uh, I mean, I it, know, it, it, Robinson it, had some really good games. It was solid. It was solid. <laughs> it was. It was solid. solid. It was solid. I, like it wasn't explosive. It was solid enough, though, that you couldn't, you couldn't handle the running game, you know, with just four down linemen. You know, you still had to commit to the box a little bit with Robinson because he's a big guy. You know, right. and I mean, he can rumble. So, um, yeah. So McLaurin this year had, uh, what's it eight? About eight targets a game, if I'm doing the math quickly in my head, averaging it's about eight targets a game. I was about to say, that's not bad at all. You're right. For a number one receiver, it's low. For a number Is one it? receiver, it's low. I would think so, yeah. Like, check Jefferson or check Tyreek Hill. Check those guys and see how many check targets they're getting. Yeah, look at the offense. You can't compare a grade-A offense to a team that's, that's one step above a JV, you know, when you're talking stuff <laughs> like that. I mean, you really can. I mean <laughs> – Third down conversions to do play into your total targets. If you're not yeah. converting on third down, you're not extending drives, so you're not getting extra opportunities. That is true. Well, Washington was a 27th rank rush offense this year, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll stick by my great. comments. Yeah, yeah, it was. That, it, was it wasn't great. great. Come on, people. 27 out of 32 teams. It wasn't great. It stunk. You, so you say it wasn't great. You mediocre teams. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. They were the bottom of the barrel. 
They're, but John, it's not that I disagree with you. It's they're the but yeah, and 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 that's all the sludge at the bottom of the barrel. That what all those five ten teeth at the bottom. That, that's what they encompass. You know. All right, real quick, uh, real quick though, because time by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So real quick then, uh, 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 let, let's keep this very brief. But I'd like to get your thoughts. Uh, uh, just a sentence uh, uh, from each one of you. Uh, Dan Quinn, will he succeed or not, John? For the Washington Commanders head coach. What does success mean? You have to define that. Winning playoffs next couple of years. Not the Super Bowl, but winning, getting his team into the playoffs next next two to three years. Uh, yes. Eddie? Yeah, I would agree. I say yes. Greg? Not this year, but maybe in two or three. Yeah, I say no. Seattle Seahawks, Ravens defensive coordinator Mike McDonald. He's a young kid over there. Uh, uh, let, let, let's do this. Uh in two years, can they make a run into the playoffs uh, uh, seriously? Uh, 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 that kind of puts a good barometer on it. Seattle Seahawks. Uh, John? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Eddie? Yeah, I mean, they have some talent, definitely on the offensive side. I think they just have to shore up that defense. But, yes, I think they gotcha. can. Gotcha. I say no also. The Raiders, Antonio Pierce, uh, uh, linebackers coach, uh, uh, interim head coach, uh, John? That one's tough because I like Antonio Pierce and I think the Raiders did the right thing by hiring him because the last time they got rid of an interim popular coach, uh, Bisaccia, it blew up in their faces, right? So I think they made the right move. They don't have a quarterback, so I'm going to say no. They're not going to, uh, they're going to, they're not going to make the playoffs. And, and before Eddie, you answered, that's why I've said no to the first two. <laughs> no quarterback. Eddie, uh, the Raiders, uh, 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 and do you think they make a deep playoff run or can make a deep playoff run in two years or make a, a no. solid playoff run? No. Okay, no, uh, uh, no. Greg. Two to three years, yes, because this is the year of the quarterback and they can get one this year. Gotcha. Uh, uh, okay, uh, John, uh, uh, the Tennessee Titans, they got the Bengals offensive coordinator who didn't call the plays, Brian Callahan, as their head coach. Yes. Uh, are you asking me if he's going to be successful or not? Or are you yeah, just yes, asking yes. Me? If, if they can make a playoff run in two years? Yes, I do. I do think. Yeah, because, and, uh, the, because I liked what I saw out of Spears, assuming he stays on the same trajectory. Uh, Will Levis? Is he a franchise quarterback? I think the I think the jury's out on that, and it's again off a mm -hmm. half a season basically. Right, but there's yeah. something about that guy that I like. I like him. I don't know if it's his swagger. I don't know if it's those big biceps. Whatever it is, I I, I kind of <laughs> like what he's got going on there, and I think he's they they've got a good young core. I like their tight end. I like um, that they could still you know if they get a like. Everyone's projecting Joe Walt to go to Tennessee, and I think they're going to get a, not a good big left tackle in this draft at that at that slot at number six, I think. So, uh, I'm sorry, number eight, I think. Seven or eight, they're in that uh, range. I think they're going to get one of the best two left tackles that are coming out of the draft. So, yeah, I think they'll be back in the playoffs. Yeah, maybe even next year I think they'll be back in the playoffs. It's also the division and, they're in, too, so I think they'll, they'll, yeah, they'll be in the playoffs. Yeah, that's true. AFC South. Eddie, Tennessee Titans, uh, Bengals offensive coordinator, Brian Callahan. Is there, and FYI, if you guys don't know, Brian Callahan is the son of Bill Callahan, former Nebraska Cornhuskers coach, former Raiders coach, uh, seen as a, uh, uh, what do they call those smart people? Uh, 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 super smart uh, offensive lineman. He, he can make he can make uh, gold out of water. Uh, Bill Callahan. Eddie, do you think uh, 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 he succeeds in Titans, taking him to the playoffs the next two years? Uh, I'm a little bit more skeptical, um, only because I think, you know, they, they definitely have a great running back in Derrick Henry. We don't know if he's going to be back or not. Um, Ty J Spears, like, you know, John noted, he's a, you know, he's, he's a good change of uh, pace back, but they really don't have really, really any wide receivers. DeAndre Hopkins is on the, you know, wrong side of 30. Uh, their tight end is good. He's a rookie from last year, Okongwu. Uh, he's a, an emerging guy, but I, I, it depends on what kind of, offense this guy you know designs if, especially if he didn't play call it'll be interesting what kind of offense this guy does come up with uh for the for the team but i, I to me i'm more skeptical i, I say no that they, that they won't be successful in two years uh greg three years is a lifetime in the nfl anybody
money yeah, and succeed is. in a three-year window. Uh, the question is, can they do it next year or the year after? And uh, the division helps them. I tend to agree with Eddie, but isn't T. Higgins a free agent? What happens if Higgins signs with Tennessee? All of a sudden, well, that's why this is for fun. I'd receive her. Yeah, that's why we're doing this for fun. That's why we're doing this for fun, because free agency will play a hand. Okay, so I say... I was going to say, to Greg's point, I agree with you, Greg, but here's the other thing. Wide receiver is now, it's so deep, both in free agency and the college draft, where it's a devalued, to me, it's a devalued asset, because it seems like you could get a top-notch receiver every year within the easily the first two rounds of the NFL draft. So that's less of an issue for me. Quarterback, running back, if you have a good running back, whether it's that's a bulldozer or, or an all-around guy, I think that's better. But it's a good point. Yeah, T. Higgins is available, and he may follow his coach to, to uh, Tennessee. Uh, okay. I, I say yes, only because of his pedigree, but more importantly because of what John said, and uh, it's a weak division. That's the only reason I say that. But if it was any other division, I'd be with Eddie. Okay, uh, 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 John, uh, uh, the Patriots, linebackers coach Gerard Mayo, second youngest guy behind uh, 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 McDonald. Uh, never had a coaching, never coordinated position. Uh, what's your thoughts? Yes or no? Okay, so I'm going to hedge a little bit. My my gut is telling me no way they make the playoffs in two years. And they're in a tough division, so it's like it's even harder for them. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go out and say the next two years they'll still be in last place in the AFC East. Um, his only hope is that he – does not try to put in the Patriot way, the so-called Patriot way in New England. He has to get away from that, ironically enough. Um, it doesn't work. The Patriot way doesn't work. And the way I know that is, take any Bill Belichick disciple who's co- gone on to coach anywhere else outside of New England, and they've largely been abysmal failures. So the Patriot way is now garbage as far as I'm concerned. It, it was never a thing. It was the Brady way. I'll, I'll hop on Greg's bandwagon on that one. Um, so no, they'll be, they'll, I think Gerard Mayo will be a good head coach. I think the Patriots will be in last place for the next two seasons. Eddie. Yeah, that, 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 uh, roster needs a lot of work, man. (laughs) Yeah. So there is no way that this one coach can turn that around, you know, in two seasons. I mean, it took, you know, Kyle Shanahan three years for, to get the Niners back to, you know, being a, a better than a mediocre team. So, uh, Gerald, you know, Jared Mayo, I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. I, that, that roster needs a lot of work. So I say no. Greg. I think this, I think this job could ruin Gerard Mayo. He doesn't have the experience and he doesn't have the team. No way. And, and right. I feel for him because he is a great player. You know, uh, 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 early on, I started to give my two cents, and I realized, oh, let me go through the rotation. All of y'all are right. I think it's, the division's too tough. I think Bill Belichick, the general manager, has set that team back a few years just to rebuild a foundation, and they don't know what the hell they're going to do at quarterback. And I'm not – Mac, I'm not entirely unsold on Mac Jones. He was put in a terrible situation after a decent rookie season. The only thing that concerns me, he reminds me of Tua with his arm. It's, it's not the strongest arm, but you're right. That team, it, because of the division, could be in last place for, for, for three to four years. All right, the Atlanta Falcons, Rams defensive coordinator Raheem Morris. Uh, Big John. I like Raheem Morris as a coach. Um, I think the fa- – look – I think the Falcons get the right quarterback in there. They're they're the next Detroit Lions. They've got the talent. They just need to put it together. And unfortunately, they built up the team for Arthur Smith everywhere except the most important position. Mm -hmm. Like they built up receiver, running back. The defense is a swarming type of defense. It may not be traditionally a great defense, but it gets the job done. And if you have an offensive powerhouse like they do, I mean, look, Drake London, uh, Kyle Pitts, B. John Robinson, um, Tyler Algier, the offensive line is hot. So when you put it all together offensively, what's the only thing that's a staring zero in that in that offense? It's the quarterback. You're right. You're so right. they hit on the quarterback, whether they draft one or whether they sign a veteran. And I don't care which one it is, but if they get someone that can actually lead that offense, then I think they're the next Detroit Lions. Will it happen in two years? 
look, I don't know Raheem Morris's plan, but if he's like most defensive coordinators who become head coaches, he's going to want a veteran quarterback in there. He's going to want someone that he can uh, count on. He doesn't want to put up with rookie nonsense for two years, right? So my guess is he's, he may get a veteran quarterback, and you may see this team in the playoffs next season. Eddie. Yeah, you know, a lot of what I'm going to piggyback on a lot of what John said. I mean, their offense is actually pretty good. They have uh, a pretty good uh, running back who, unfortunately, they didn't really utilize him well this year in B. John Robinson. I think they could have utilized him better. Uh, you know, Drake London's a, gr- a great wide receiver, and their defense is, uh, you know, it's decent. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see if they can shore that up a little bit. But yeah, the QB is definitely the biggest, biggest uh, void in that, in that offense. And, it, it'll be interesting to see who they bring in, but that that team is built now to to w- start winning some games now. Whether they're a playoff team or not, I mean, they were almost worth this year, but you know, it, it it all it all hedges on bringing somebody who can uh, you know move the ball uh, on the offensive side for, with uh, on the quarterback side. Right, Greg. Unlike the other two, I'm not sold <laughs> that Desmond Ritter is the whole problem. I think the offensive coordinator, like Eddie said, really mismanaged the running backs. He had two great running backs. If you look at the way Detroit handled um, their two, David Montgomery and Tamir Gibbs, they could have done that. Although the problem is Tyler Algier is a pounder and B. John Robinson is a pounder. They don't have separate skill sets. They're just both good backs. Um, I do think a more dynamic quarterback will help them. Um, but I also think Ritter could have been much better with better play calling and better usage of play action. That said, um, I think a coach can make a difference here. I do. And again, remember, this is the year of the quarterback. Maybe a defensive coordinator doesn't want a rookie, but if he gets a rookie that can perform like C.J. Stroud, I don't know any defensive quarterback defensive coordinator that wouldn't have wanted C.J. Stroud as their quarterback last year. He played extremely well. Now, it's unusual for a rookie to do that. Right. Understand. Yeah, that, yeah that's Very an outlier. <laughs> well, it is an outlier, but that's but it proves it can be done. Now, right. what veteran quarterbacks that you think are game changers are going to be available in free agency? I just – I would trade Tyler Algier to a running back needy team for a quarterback. That her might cousins. Be what you need. Her cousins. Right. Her yeah. cousins is a free agent. Well, her I mean, uh, is available. You're right. Well, he's a free I, agent. They wouldn't have to trade anything on that. So uh, here's the okay. thing. I'm sorry. Hold on. One quick question. I know we're trying to move on. If you're Atlanta sitting in number eight, do you trade up into like the top five to get one of the one of those three quarterbacks, whether it's May or Daniels? No, nope, you don't have to. Okay, that's that's interesting. You so, think you so, think they could get like a Bo Nix or something later on, or the your Michigan kid? JJ. I yeah, yeah I was going to say your Michigan at, kid. At five. And I agree so, with Jim Harbaugh. You didn't see what JJ could do because it was a run first offense in Michigan. But when they needed JJ, he was extremely good spinning the ball. Uh, I think Daniels may fall to five because Marvin Harrison Jr. is going in the top three. I'm guessing. And you know he might go probably type. going to be a lineman or a defensive player that goes in the top five. So I think I think Daniels, who I basically ranked, I don't rank Caleb Williams as the top quarterback. I just don't. Uh, I think uh, JJ is the second best behind May, but I don't really like running quarterbacks because I think they tend to get hurt. I prefer pocket passers who can run. I prefer your Josh Allen types over your. Lamar Jackson types. Gotcha. Okay, so uh, my take is simple. I agree with John. This is the bet. This is the second best team for any new head coach behind the Chargers. At the end of the day, Greg, you're right. Some of that play calling was questionable. But Arthur Smith was just a quarterback away from turning that team into a playoff team. So I thought Arthur Smith kind of got the the kind of got screwed over here. And I think they will trade up. And here's why. Russell Wilson, Kirk Cousins, they're old, really old. And, and you can you can trade up, grab one of the rookies, get him under a rookie contract, and you got three to five years to play with. What Raven fans don't realize, with Lamar Jackson's brand-new contract, all that rookie uh, 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 
contract, they can't spend as freely. So that's what I think the Falcons will do. Plus, Raheem Morris has was interim head coach for the Falcons. When he was with the Bucks, he had Josh Freeman. So he probably understands the importance of having that quality uh uh, a quarterback that he's never had. And the fact that he already knows the Blank family, that whole sh shebang, they're probably going to give him a year so they can go up there. Now, I am i don't like Caleb Williams. I think he's going to be a, a big bust. I'm into leadership. I'm into the machismo, that that locker room for, for, for that leader to rally his troops and Caleb Williams be crying every day. So so I don't view him as, as a – but Drake, I like Drake, but he's a running quarterback too, you know, in, in certain ways. So uh, uh, to go along with – you know, it's there's a lot of questions. And I, I'm not saying I'm right on Caleb Williams, but the point is there's three to five quarterbacks in this draft, if I remember correctly. All right, let's – Let's move on and wrap it up with the final two teams so we can complete it out. I asked y'all for quick answers, and I get an encyclopedia from four dinosaurs, counting myself. <laughs> All right, Big John, the Carolina Panthers, they've got the Buccaneers offensive coordinator, Dave Canales, who had a long, distinguished career with Seattle before uh, going to Tampa and then going to Carolina. Yeah, I don't – A QB I, I guru is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I think you could put Jesus in that coaching position and he'd fail because yeah. um, it's a horrible situation to be in. It's a horrible owner. Uh, they're not going to get free agents to sign there. Uh, you know, it's a horrible situation for any head coach. I think he's the guinea pig for the next head coach. Like at some point, it's going to be like, you're going to have th that owner, Tepper, is going to have to prove that he is not going to be a burden and an albatross around the neck of every coach he hires. Mm. And until that happens, that's going to be a horrible spot that no one's going to want. So as much as I think Canales is, is deserving of a shot to your, like, you know how Ben Johnson said no to the commanders <laughs> Canales probably should have said no to the Panthers. And I think the Panthers were another one that needs a college head coach. You know what I mean? Somebody directly from the college ranks, um, just to get NFL experience. So I would have said that would have been a better situation there. I think, yeah, I don't, I don't see, I don't see too much good coming out of that hire or the whole Carolina situation, quite honestly. Eddie, my man, what, what's your take? Mine's going to be quick and to the point that team is hurting, man. Uh, hopefully Canales can get something out of the quarterback, uh, you know, because, you know, he's the guy that, you know, they, they bet the franchise on, you know, and he's the little guy that, really hadn't, you know, it seemed like it was too big for him this game. You know, the, at least this year it was. You know, maybe in a couple of years he'll get it down, but maybe this Dave Canales can go ahead and, and turn him around. Uh, Bryce Young is is definitely a talent, at least he showed in college, um, but he hasn't shown it yet in the NFL, and that's probably why they're bringing him over here to be this uh, QB whisperer to kind of unlock and unleash this guy. But the quarterback alone isn't going to be enough at, the, at, at Carolina. They're going to need to surround him with other guys than what they have right now. Hey, Eddie, you know what else I just realized I remembered? It's like the other thing people know is that Frank Reich wanted Stroud. He didn't want Yes, Young. yes, he wanted Stroud. Tepper wanted he want, he Tepper. Wanted Stroud. Is the team Tepper. Owner. Right. Tepper, the owner, is the guy who Six, wanted. Four right. versus five, ten. Yeah. And so so that, don't you think that's going potentially through the head of every other applicant that's like, hey, even if I could get somebody to come in here, I could get easily overruled by someone who Correct. really doesn't understand football. So, and yep. look, it's his team. He could run it any way he wants, but that's another factor, I think. It's like people in the NFL know these things. There's no secrets in the NFL, right? So yep. they know what's going on in there, right? So they could have had total, Stroud. Total lack of talent. Total lack of talent, short quarterback, and they don't roll them out. If you're going to play with a five foot ten, five foot eleven quarterback, you have to roll them out because they can't see over those behemoths coming up the middle. I mean, how many passes did he have blocked at the line this year? And it's not his fault; it's a physical limitation. I was pro Stroud, and I don't like Ohio State. I mean. <laughs> Bottom line is yeah. <laughs> six four versus five ten. That's the bottom line, and so I think Canal and has Canales really shown any type mm. of genius on offense before? Yeah. I mean, oh, is man, Greg, <laughs> is Tampa Bay this this dynamic offensive team, or did they go to the playoffs <laughs> because they're in a sucky division? 
Well, that's true, Greg. But look, uh, I will say one thing in Canales' favor. Baker Mayfield finally looked like an NFL quarterback this year. I agree. He did his rookie year, too. I was about to say, he looked at his rookie year, too. He looked like a, he looked like a superstar his rookie year, too. Well, so, you know what? so, let, so that... let's keep moving on. Let's keep moving on here, okay. guys. So, oh, and only say that, John, only because Greg, you said everything that I've said. The problem with Canales is extremely weak division. And if it wasn't for the pedigree of Baker Mayfield, remember he's over on number one draft, so he's talented. Of that showing up, we don't hear about Canales. But in Canales's defense, uh, taking a job may have been the best because. The Bucs may suck again next year. I mean, that's how bad – that division is bad. The, the NFC and AFC South divisions are terrible. So so Canales did the right thing by taking the job because I agree with Greg. He did nothing to really deserve being in the interview room. So take it while you can. But Bryce Young, Bill Walsh says it takes 20-some-odd games. Uh, I can't remember the number he says. Steve Young told this story. And he said it takes a couple of seasons roughly to determine if a kid can play in the NFL. We're at 17 games now. This was said when it was, what, 14 games? So I don't think I think Bryce Young is stats. If I had to guess stats, I say there's a greater chance of Bryce Young being a bust than there is of him turning it around. The only saving I grace. With that, William. I the only with saving. That. Well, let me finish. They have let me finish. To get an offense that plays to his strengths. He can spin the ball. You just got to get him out where he can see the receivers. Well, yeah, I mean, any, what you're saying is give a quarterback time to make the play and he'll make the play. That's all 32 quarterbacks fall under that theory. My issue is he's 5'10", he's very diminutive or small, uh, uh, and that really could – he's not – he's 5'10", which is small enough, but he's also small and he's not a thick – like Stroud. I don't know how tall he is, but that's a thick – the kid, you know, he doesn't have the muscle mass, I think, to survive a season. Now, the secondary is the only positive thing with the Carolina Panthers. Bad ownership, bad everything else. So I think this team is going to uh, – uh, 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 this team is going to uh, uh, collapse, and poor Dave Canales is, is going to – Over uh, under uh, six uh, wins uh, next year, William. Over under six wins. Oh, I, I, I'd have to check their schedule out because remember they are in the AFC or the NFC uh, 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 South, a very weak division. Oh, hold on, are they in the North or the six South? Six wins is pretty. That's long. the South. The yeah, the South, the South, the South. I, I, I don't know. I'd have to see the outside schedule, guys. Uh, 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 don't give me a surprise look, but we are going to close this episode out right now. Uh, 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 first of all, I want to thank y'all uh, to the audience. This is what happens when you get four dinosaurs together. We all have more to say than we have time allotted. But that said. Do not forget, you can check this podcast out at grumblingsmedia.com. You can also check us out on YouTube and Rumble under the profile name Grumblings Media, as well as traditional podcast outlets, Apple, Google, Pandora, and Spotify. And Greg, thank you for being here. We're going to have you on again for the Super Bowl preview. And Eddie, my friend, always great to have you as I hate to say it, the silent co-host today. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. And then Big John, thanks for coming on, partner. And for everybody else, thank you for tuning in. Do not forget to share. And until next time, we bid you adieu. Good to see, see you. you again, John, William, and Eddie. Yeah, you too, Greg. Hey, everybody, this is Big John from Grumblings Media, and I just want to say thank you for watching our content. If you want to support our efforts here at Grumblings Media, just smash the subscribe button right here, totally free, or just go ahead and consume more of our great content. Click either one of these two boxes.